Bucks. I feel like football is the most cutthroat of them all, and like the loyalty is is next zero. To none. It seems I feel like. like there's a little bit more or a lot more in hockey, and you could sign these eight year deals. Which if you yeah, get, I was gonna say if you, you get bought out, you fully get guaranteed long deal. If you get bought out, uh, yeah, you get t- you uh, you get two thirds of the deal. If you're over yeah, the course, like James, of, James Neal hasn't been in the league for like half a decade now. He's still getting paid, right? So Which they, is wild. So, no, so what they do is, let's say he got bought out and he had three years left on his deal and he was making six million bucks, you would get two thirds of that, so four million over uh, per per year, so three years, twelve million over uh, six years, so twice the length of how many years you had left. So they kind of space it out. So if he if he had three years left, he get paid for six years, but two thirds. That kind of takes what, care of the guy afterwards. It's, it's, right, yeah, so you can't really spend it stupidly. Yeah, and you yeah, get, yeah, bought, you get bought out. Some guys get bought out, signed with a new team because they're bought out not because they're not NHLers anymore, but it's just like hard cap, hard cap. We got to get mm-hmm. rid of money. This guy's still solid, but like you said with Derrick Henry, like he's getting older. You get bought out. Get two thirds. You sign with another team. You end up making more than you would the have. Double yeah. dip. You could double yeah, dip. Yeah, there's a double dip in the league too, but it's a one year thing. Like Your boy you go, got the double dip. What's that? I got a double dip. You did. You got a small dip. A small dip. You got a small you dip. Went, right. You went from you in the kiddie pool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shallow. Hey, end. but a dip nonetheless. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Yes. But like, hey, will because my brain is not firing all cylinders. What? How do you double dip? <laughs> <laughs> you just said it's allowed in the NFL for one year. So every you every like, you 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 can, every I think vested you double dip veteran, more, but it's like a year by year basis. No, every vested like veteran um, can double dip one time in their career. So. When I am as a vested player and I'm on the day one opening roster, like if the ball kicks off and I'm on on that unit, like my year is now owed to me. Okay. If they oh, were to if, nice. if, if they were they, to cut you and you sign if they were to else. cut me, I would still get that salary that they owe me, and then I could still sign with somewhere else, and then you oh, also get that money year. on top of it. That's a blessing in disguise. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, that's I was nice gonna idea. ask though, as far as like that ruthlessness of the fact that they just snip guys, um. Has the the players' association in football done a better job to claw back at more like guaranteed and how I guess less ruthless it is from a guy who could play, you know, you know he could be gone the next day after an injury or something, is right? That... Yeah, the, the superstars I'm not at liberty get it, to speak right? positively about the NFLPA. Go ahead, uh, I mean, you're not you're not willing to. No, I just don't think they. they I don't think. I they, I think they could be way more effective than they actually are. Do you think that knowing that, whatever do you think that comes uh, oh, from the guys making sixty million a year though stepping up on behalf of those guys? I think your pro- I think your problem is is the degrees of payment are cra- are insane. Like on a team, you have three to five guys that are broke off, like don't have to work again the rest of their lives, and then the rest of it is like they're eating. It's like classes, kill. like you have your upper class and then the right. big middle class. Uh, the really middle class middle is middle basically class. yeah cut and then out. A yeah. Very yeah, very yeah, yeah. large amount is the lower class. So when you get the these CBA negotiations, the collective bargaining agreement, like renegotiating everything, it's it's the same way as you look at politics. Like you, they throw out a couple of things, like oh we're going to give a higher minimum to rookies or guys that are you yeah, know yeah, under yeah, your crumbs. four years, and then everyone's like oh we got to jump at that because the majority of the league is like four years or younger because right. there's such a high turnover right. rate right, right. and the average in the league is two well, and a half years. So union is t- it's so big, dude. That that, like, that turnover rate has hit the NHL because it's yeah. way, it wasn't like that like 10 years ago. I Guys, there's a higher play- demand of athletes now. Like or a higher supply of athletes. Oh, really? There's more, I just feel like with all the access we have to social media and the training and all that, even for when I was in high school, I see what these kids had. I was at my high school last week. And it just seems like their facilities are nicer. They just have a right. They're in a, put in a better position to be successful. Yeah. Okay. So you just got kids pedaling out that are like, like the I guess the barrier of entry is kind of just done this a little bit more, so they can cycle out that bottom, you know, ten no fifteen. Shit. Dudes. And That's a good cheaper, And they're cheaper. Like yeah, way right. cheaper. Which yeah. is what like the NFL the... is nuts. Like you got to win like with the with the QB on his like rookie deal like like it's 5 years that's, right you want to so you got be before you got to yeah. pay him if he's a stud right you got to like, so it's you're looking for your cheapest options it's like with the Bengals they when they had Joe Burrow and they knew he's going to be a star it's like they're pouring they're trying to pour more money into the offensive line and get him weapons with Jamar Chase and those guys uh they're trying what, to just uh, sprinkle uh, around what's question him. about him like handsome guy obviously he's got the world by the balls he's a star quarterback like I don't know if I want to like my star quarterback kind of walking in with these fucking outfits every time like that. Like I want him just be a little bit more all business. That's so hockey of you. 
What do you mean that's so hockey? hockey. It's like, I thought you liked the outfits. You liked, yeah. Yeah. I thought you like in Joey hockey, B's got some been, sauce to him. He got it. The, the outfit he wore tonight was kind of. I didn't see. It. That's what I'm saying. It was like it's a white like, and white I get with some like pink. I get, I get switching uh, it up a little bit, but he's got like the frosted tips going. He looks like a Ken doll. Looks like M M&M. and M. That he's little, that yeah, little. He's, he's like going he's like through like an M and M, you know, Ken doll phase where it's just like, buddy, like get off your fucking Instagram grid and get the fucking playbook. No. Am I, I out of my fucking mind I here? Think, no? I think Joe is like one of the guys you don't got to worry about like Is that. he struggling? Right, right, right. Joe, right. Like, he just meeting well? Joe no, and being around Joe. Joe, Joe just seems like a cat that's like dialed, like dialed the fucking. Like, right. He's Fish, a cat that's sitting his, his locker They say, they say Joe B plays chess against himself yes. at his locker. Like he's just a different cat. Okay. And you're saying you, you like how Austin Matthews shows the flair. No, I'm, I, I think that I would be, I would, I'm saying that if I could have the ladder, like if I could have like, Tom Brady walking in like a tailored suit. I'd rather, it seems like that guy is just there for business rather than like worrying about this new, like trendy um, outfit. Hey, I love hey, that. You should, you should I love that coach. this is coming from a guy wearing a robe. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Bro, I wouldn't want me to be a fucking starting quarterback. <laughs> I wouldn't want me getting the fucking water hey, bottles to win that, a championship. Like, that's not me being a hypocrite either. Like, I was the guy who dressed like a, like, I'm saying I wouldn't want me mentality. leading the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? You get the old school vibe. So I guess I was wrong in a sense of maybe in a certain case he's delegating his attention to like something that I would be like, eh, like let's just win some fucking games here. But you're saying he's highly intelligent, highly committed, and I'm off base on that. Yeah, and it, and to if he's got a third thing, which again I'm not in the locker room, but if he has good relationships with the guys, like ultimately you want them influencing, you know, having influence on the locker room in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, you like you want the locker room to feel good about the quarterback, and you don't yeah. care what other people think. Right, right. Well, and, if and he, and he then, checks and all those boxes a, of intelligence. Because well, I he's said a good that dude, you guys kind of got jammed up, where you're like, oh. Uh. Because no. he's it, it, you, there's guys that can just they're just in that one percent of the one percent and they get the they have a little diff, they have a different swagger. They to can kind of okay. do they can kind of do what they want. Yeah, right. but I feel like just being an outsider, like kind of casually enjoying hockey, I feel like that's a very traditional hockey mindset to have. Yeah, because uh, they all like uh, you guys have to wear suits, suit and tie all the time. You you it's put a microphone a in front of ninety nine point nine percent of hockey players. It feels uh, like you guys are more team team, team than like, uh, yeah, yeah. football. And even talking to Biz, well, cut that. But like, even like, just talking to you guys, like, anytime there's a compliment dished your way, you're passing it somewhere else. Like, you, hockey players, are like, don't look at me. Like, yes. don't, don't give yeah, me the compliment. Yeah, there's very much team don't be first a part of it. attitude. Yeah, that's why I got a little because I feel like uh, PK Subban was a guy recording. that showed a little flair. Who I, Subban? Oh yeah, he. Showed, I feel like he, he was a flair a guy. And yeah, I, I didn't know. I don't know anything about his play, but it seemed like one of the things that kind of got him out of Nashville and like sent him somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. He was loud. He did a bunch of stuff. But I mean, he he was. He was like a dynamic player. I mean, he would have these end-to-end rushes, especially early in his career in Montreal. The crowd used to like love him. He'd get the puck, and they'd all like start like a small chant, and then he just looked wind it up. He was like a legend. But I yeah. also feel like it, they actually let him be himself in Nashville, and it was more towards the end of his time in Montreal when Bergervan came in. Uh, Terry and him had some beefs that went like yeah, like in, in between periods on some of those reality shows that might have followed the Canadians. He's you know he's giving it to him a bit.